Hi there YouTubers and 3D Studio Max lovers. In today's episode we're going to talk about Corona Render 11. Yeah, you heard that right. I see that uh, Corona just released the latest version, which is version 11. The version 10 was just released four months ago, so I was expecting the V-Ray 7 to be released in this period. But yeah, I guess some people are in a hurry, so they just released the last version of uh, Corona Render. So if you guys are curious about uh, what's happening in the latest version, yeah, let's jump in. So yeah, one of the main features in latest version of Corona is a Corona tile map. You can create tiles directly from uh, Corona maps. They have here in um, their uh, textures this uh, new thing called Corona tile map. It has uh, some parameters, it's nothing uh, special about it. You can use real world scale, it has a map channel which is very good. You can also rotate or uh, change the size of it only with a multiplier from here. I don't know why this is needed. Anyway, um, it has some parameters that reminds me of as you can see here, a very the famous plugin much that was called Bercon Maps and, and there you, you had so also the Bercon Tiles this, uh, plugin. You can find it also for 3 Studio Max 2024, so I'm gonna leave a link in the description for those who are willing to learn it. It's a really, really helpful plugin. Only downside for the plugin is the fact that it's not working with Corona, only with V-Ray. Uh, as you can see, this has some parameters. You can have a treasure bond, stack bond, flamish, common bond, and so on. And you also have a custom pattern so that you can create yourself, which is quite helpful. If I make here 20 by, uh, I don't know, 5, you can see. Oh, yeah, this is a custom pattern. As you can see, I can change it to any other pattern like really fast. And I can also, in the custom pattern, I can create uh, different rows and different types of tiles. This is quite easy to do. The first uh, is the offset, the height, and the width. So, taking in consideration, this is 0, 1, 1. So, this means that the offset is 0, so the tiles stay in the same place. And uh, the height is 5, and the width is 20. So, this means that we have a 0, 5. 520. In case I'm creating here a 0.5, then my width is going to be half of the 20, which is 10. Normal tech bond, a square 15 by 15, but it's nothing special about it. You can also have a corner radius if you want. So if you uh, want to have like a small uh, radius on these tiles, you can just have it from here. For example, if I add one, or let's make it five so you can actually see it yeah you can get this kind of stuff which can be helpful or not yeah i'm not very sure for example if i go with 7.5 i can really get a very round uh tile in here like these ones which uh, yeah they can be very helpful i guess and of course you can also change the color of the tile or the gap color you can also apply a map to this uh, gap or tile color yeah the tile mapping can be per original per tile or centered which is yeah could be helpful and the placement can be stretched or crop so and the good part is that you have also some randomization to all of these things so let me just make this one you can change the width oh no let me just make this zero and the gap let me just make it 0.5 uh, so yeah you can add here all kind of stuff to create you better tiles and to yeah to have some randomization in them uh yeah they are cool but still they are not that amazing at, as the Bercon Maps plugin that we had uh, a couple of years ago. Those were like really incredible. You could do almost anything. There is another plugin that is doing this kind of tiles that is quite cool and it's called uh, Quick Tiles, which is this one. And I think this one is much better than uh, this uh, tiles map that Corona is coming with. I think, uh, yeah, this is one of the best. I will make a video in the future. Uh, I just didn't have the time to work with it. But the cool part uh, with this uh, plugin is that you can actually take a texture and you can create your own tile from that texture and it can be any texture and it can look quite amazing and you don't have any repetition in it. So I think this this is quite amazing but anyway let's go back to our corona render so yeah this is the first part and i think it's quite good to have it but uh, it's not really a big improvement and uh, yeah let's go to the next one the next part for the big improvement is the 
scatter altitude so it's not really about uh, the corona render it's more about the scatter which is not part of the corona render anymore it's part of the chaos because it's also working with, uh, with V-Ray so I don't know why they actually made such a big deal about the scatter altitude and the fact that you can actually have trees only according to an altitude anyway it is what it is and uh, the next thing that they also add in here is the scatter look at so now you can have some couple of objects in your scene and these objects can all look at a point or a part of your scene uh, as you can see here they have this uh, this fish that they are all looking in the same direction and you can also have like a crowd with people where everyone is looking in the same direction the next thing that they add in here and it's quite nice is this edge map uh, edge shader where you can add some extra details to your scene to your object and yeah so this is quite a cool uh, feature and I think it's really going to help some people to create some extra details to their scenes. They made another one which is called Pyro but unfortunately this is only working on the Cinema 4D. Oh another thing that they brought in is the fact that they fixed a couple of things with the uh, with the bump. Uh, they improved the normal and bob filtering reducing the loss of detail in the, the channels enhanced the results with the new intel denoiser uh, which is now compatible also with nvidia gpu and the user can now take advantage of the color management options offered by the lasted version of 3d studio max 2024 and the last thing that they added in here are these uh, corona power tools which are quite cool it's really worth having them and uh, yeah you can do some cool stuff with them i will make a video only about these power tools in the future because it uh, can really help you achieve some randomization for your scene so yeah as you can see these are all the so-called new features of corona render 11 uh, i'm a little bit disappointed to be honest and i was expecting a little bit more from this as you can see uh, this um, corona 11 i think uh, in my opinion it was they were just in a hurry to come up with another version of Corona Render when this all of this could be just an update to Corona Render 10 in my opinion. Uh, when I saw the first release of the beta version yeah I was quite uh, disappointed and I thought and I was expecting a little bit more from them so I don't know why there is a push to come up with uh, two versions in five months it is what it is uh, if you guys like this video please don't forget to subscribe I'm gonna uh, go in details in the future with all these uh, new features of the Corona 11 and I'm going to make more videos about all of these uh, new features and uh, yeah see you in the next one Bye.